Live from the Business Radio X studio in Atlanta, it's time for Dental Business Radio. Brought to you by Practice Quotient. Practice Quotient bridges the gap between the provider and payer communities. Now here's your host, Patrick O'Rourke. Hi there, friends of the dental business community. This is Patrick O'Rourke, and I am delighted to be here with you today. Thank you for joining us. Dental Business Business Radio is brought to you by Practice Quotient, PPO Analysis and Negotiation, top-tier representation for top-tier providers. If you're not getting top-tier compensation, you should probably talk to some professionals that can help that make that happen. Think about who has signing authority at your practice for six figures up, because that's the type of decisions that need to be made. Practice quotient, PPO analysis and negotiation. Thank you guys very much for sponsoring this show. And on this show, I am thrilled to have Mr. Mark Lackis from Southern Dental Alliance. How are you, Mark? Doing great, Patrick. Thank you so much for having me on your show. It's my pleasure. My pleasure. So Mark is another Georgia boy. So shout out to everybody here in Georgia. Uh, the land of the deciders, as it's been but we won't get into all that today. Um, so Mark is the chief executive officer at a uh, little firm called Southern Dental Alliance. They're not really little. Um, Mark, can you tell us a little bit more about Southern Dental Alliance and yourself, if you'd like? Oh, with, with pleasure. Southern Dental Alliance is a, a medium-sized dental support organization, DSO. We're based here in Atlanta, We uh, are affiliated with 43 practices in Georgia, South Carolina, and Tennessee. The majority of them are in Georgia and South Carolina. And we, like all DSOs, provide non-clinical support services to great doctors so that they can provide the best possible care to their patients without having to worry about the administrative headaches. Gotcha. So when did you wake up and say, you know what, corporate dentistry, Running business at dentistry, that sounds like something I want to do. You know, I've been lucky enough to be in the dental world for about 12 years now. And I've been a part of or created three DSOs. Three. And, wow. Um, I wish I could say that this was some stroke of brilliance on my part, but um, I just found my way into my first DSO organization and have been lucky enough to stay here. Right. That's that's pretty awesome. So how many years are we talking about you've been in the in this space? I've been here. I've been doing dentistry for about 12 years now. Gotcha. Yeah. So, you know, quite a bit has changed in in 12 years, at least from my standpoint. You know, all of our perspectives are are our own. Right. And so we have our own perceptions. And I'm interested to hear what what's changed since 12 years ago to today. A lot. You're right. Um, I've been fortunate enough to watch the impact that DSOs can have in providing great care to the patients. So the DSO industry was fairly new back in 2007. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was watching as the standard business principles of other types of companies were being applied to dentistry following along in the tried and true path that had been filed, followed by, you know, led by medicine back in, you know, as we all know, there are very few primary care pro- providers anymore because they've all been consolidated. Mm-hmm. It makes sense to bring together groups of practices, provide them centralized services so that the practices can provide care to the patients. I try to take, we, Try to take away everything that doesn't affect a patient. About maybe 5% of uh, dentists were part of a DSO, you know, way back then in 2007, 2008. And it's, uh, you know, pick your number now, but it's at least 20%. So very, very rapid growth. And it's because the DSO model makes sense. DSOs are the only ones that can do things like dramatically increase access to care. I entered the industry at a time when the Surgeon General had identified the absolute uh, abysmal state of oral health care for underprivileged children, and that was single-handedly fixed by DSOs. Um, 
How's so, that? Well, the Surgeon General and others identified a market need. There were a lot of children that were not getting care. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it was a business problem that was solved by business people and passionate doctors, such as my partner, Dr. Miguel Hernandez, who have done nothing but uh, Medicaid dentistry, their careers, because that's what they love, have been facilitated to accomplish that in a structure like a DSO. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm just going to um, state this in in my own words, and just for the listeners out there too, because we have all types of different listeners. Uh, You know, we have docs, we have insurance people, business people. And so the, there's no access to care. So there, there wasn't any place, particularly in rural areas. Am I, would I, that, would that be an accurate statement? So if you're thinking about Georgia, you're thinking about outstate Georgia down in Twiggs County, or, you know, in, in all of these kind of outlying places outside of Metro. And it's hard to get a uh, pediatric specialist to work there um, and to run a business, if, particularly when the margins are lower because Medicaid reimbursements, are going to be the lowest in the state. In fact, in Georgia, it's by law going to be the lowest in the state. Would that be an accurate statement? Well, it's much more complex than that. Uh, I'm, I'm sure. Say a little bit about Southern Dental Alliance. We provide support services to all kinds of, of doctors and uh, um, types of practices. We are affiliated with practices in Peachtree City, very, very high income individuals, as well as typical family dentistry and orthodontics, pediatric dental specialists, and some doctors that are general dentists that treat children um, in some remote or rural places. Albany, Georgia is one of our larger practices. So the need isn't just in remote areas, uh, or at least it wasn't back, back in the day. But of course, that population is terribly underserved. Uh, I mean, the people in uh, um, tertiary environments or rural environments. And again, you know, the DSOs, myself included, as well as others, Mm -hmm. with groups like the Georgia Dental Board and the Georgia Dental Association to work on specifically access to care with passionate legislators who are interested in helping with, you know, for example, slight increases in Medicaid rates to help dentists see these children Mm -hmm. focus exclusively on that particular access to care. It is also with um, family dentistry. If a crown is a certain price point, um, perhaps a DSO might be able to do it a little more uh, inexpensively because of some efficiencies that provides access to care. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And for for pediatric dentists, I'll tell you, it's been my experience that they are pediatric dentists for a reason. They want to um, help kids, and that's their primary concern. And that's that. You know, like everything else is really kind of peripheral. Well, um, that's uh, true of all doctors, right? All doctors are passionate about uh, caring for patients. But a great example is my partner, Dr. Miguel Hernandez, who was at the founding. He and I founded Southern Dental Alliance with our other partner, Dr. Jim Nassim. And Miguel has done nothing but treat underprivileged children his entire career. It is. God God bless you, Miguel. That's awesome. And Jim to see him as well. I'm sure Jim, Jim is doing his part in South Carolina. Shout out to South Carolina. Um, So, so that's, that's important. So we're able to, to create better access to care, quality of care. We're not sacrificing quality. We're allowing the doctors to be doctors, right? So they're not doing HR functions. They're not doing payroll. They're not doing uh, credentialing. They're not doing all of that. And there's some other economies of scale with the DSO where you may be able to provide, uh, you know, benefits, maybe um, certain, I mean, there's always, you know, whenever you buy things in bulk, there's going to be some advantages there as well. Um, What other advantages did I miss? What am I leaving out? That's, that's really critical when fear with the doctors are like, here's the top three things. Why I, I'm partnering with Southern Dental Alliance. Wonderful question. Thank you for the softball. I appreciate that. Um, You're welcome. 
what we try to provide to our affiliated doctors is, is really just that. What can we do to make it your only focus to provide care to your patients? Our philosophy is we want to partner with great doctors. And partner is not a word we use lightly. We, our doctors have the ability to become direct equity owners in Southern Dental Alliance, which is a literal partnership. So what we offer is, yes, we will do all of the typical things that all DSOs do. So I'm passionate about DSOs, but of course I'm passionate about Southern Dental Alliance. I do believe the model that we have created, that's actually being copied in a number of ways. Is Imitation is the greatest form of flattery. It really is. It really is. And so what we want to provide is not just the standard, we will take away all of the headaches that you listed, but we can help you, the doctor, be more efficient. Again, maybe it's access to care again, in terms of perhaps there's something that one part of our business, doctor-led, is better at than another part of our business. We make sure those two groups are able to share that. And it makes the whole greater than the sum of its parts. Sometimes it's something as simple as the way you actually do a morning huddle and use a routing slip. Sometimes it is, in fact, things like using a different approach to uh, credentialing and and, uh, payer dynamics. And some doctors have been doing the same thing the same way. Great uh, uh, for them, but if we can provide some additional value, we would like to. So we want the doctor to go home at the end of the day feeling like I got to do what I love. And these partners over here take care of the rest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're going to step back out to the global perspective on the DSO for a second. But the one thing about SDA that, uh, yeah, I've, I've noticed is that there's, you know, a lot of times with groups, there's a, you know, like every, we have to be on all plans. We don't care, but that's what we want. Volume, 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 volume. You know, you guys are, each practice has its own strategy. And so if it's not broke, you don't know, fix it. Um, and so there's, there's, there's a lot more autonomy and it really takes good leadership to understand that, that there's not just a one size fits all that healthcare is local, even in the South, right. Even in one state, uh, sometimes even in one city. So, um, now, Patrick, I mean, that's a terrific point. And uh, thank you. If you don't mind, pl- yeah, like please elaborate on that a, a little, that's a big part of what we want to do. We find partners and uh, we are a group that's, you know, acquisition driven, um, and, uh, um, affiliation driven. So, we have choices of who to affiliate with and the, uh, the doctors have choices of who to affiliate with and the partnership that we're looking for is very respectful in both directions. But if you're partnering with a group that's very well run, don't fix it. Don't break it. We would like to be able to talk constructively with our partners and share ideas. But at the end of the day, the doctors make the decisions So the name on the front door doesn't change. The doctor doesn't go anywhere. We want long-term partners. Doctors that we partnered with in 2012 are still with us. Um, That says a lot. And actually, many of the associate doctors that became part of our organization back in 2012 are now equity owners in the company. Dr. Derek Tucker in Union, South Carolina. Absolute poster child for what we like to provide. That's also a testament. In, in my opinion. So over, you know, let's see here. We started practice quotient about seven, eight, seven years ago. Maybe eight, I can't keep track, especially these days. It's like groundhog day every day. Um, I've seen some heavy hitters come in, you know, hot and heavy and then I seen them leave. Um, and so it, there seemed to be an ebb and a flow almost, especially in the, middle part of last decade and then it ebbed and now we're definitely in more of a flow standpoint um you know what have you seen from just from you know an insider perspective at the dso like what what happens with why is there an ebb and flow any insight to that 
I think you need you to help me understand ebb and flow a little more in terms of big groups buy up a bunch of practices and then implode. Oh, sure. Uh, I think that there are DSOs that lose their way. Um, at the end of the day, I do run a business, uh, but the investors and the management need to understand that it is, has to be all about the patient. It, it can't be about just putting together a group of practices just because it gets bigger. You have to have some value added for the patient. And if a group, I've seen groups that allow themselves to get financially over leveraged and, and attempt to just do a land grab. I've seen doctor groups and you know them as well as I do that haven't been able to attract and retain the best doctors. Um, it's hard to build a business on the younger graduates only. Of course, they're a critical part of the dental landscape, um, but you need the more seasoned doctors to mentor and guide younger doctors. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's an absolutely critical uh, key to patient care is the attracting and retaining great doctors. Sometimes it's just big old business mistakes. I don't know how you can run a DSO in the Northeast the Southeast and the Northwest um, spread across the country. Um, Again, just somebody trying to do some financial arbitrage or put things together for just a business purpose. This is a wonderful industry, um, but there's got to be a focus on care of the patients. The DSOs that don't do that don't make it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Couldn't agree with you more. Um, Thank you for (laughs) For that insight, um, I and mean, I agree with you on this, you know, kind of spread too thin across the country. Healthcare inherently is local. You know, you have to really understand your own market and then move. I mean, even in the South, like South Carolina is different from Georgia. It's different from Tennessee. And it's certainly different from Alabama. Um, even if you just look at it from a pair landscape, you know, um, in and I know that obviously just cause I'm here, but we're, you know, we're national too. And so I've, I've certainly seen um, some folks become overextended or over leveraged. And, you know, I think their heart might be in the right place, but uh, sometimes it puzzles me what the, what the actual goal is. I'm like, why are you doing that again? Um, so, but that's not what you guys do. So we can't speak to them. Um, and it's probably every new industry and every time there's something that's hot and there's, you know, money chasing it somebody's going to chase it and then mistakes get made. Um, Great point, Patrick. So what do you, how do you see the business of dentistry evolving in the next few years? Well, I think consolidation is going to continue because it makes sense. Uh, I don't think that individual dental practices or privately owned groups are ever going to go away. Of course not. It's, critical. They're they're wonderful. It's the way dentistry has been delivered. But there's some things that DSOs do particularly well. It makes good patient sense. It makes good business sense. So if 20% of the dental community is consolidated into groups today, it'll grow to 30, 40, perhaps as high as 50% in the next 10 years. Um, And I, I think along with that will become coming some new uh, modes of care. Some of this is technologically driven in terms of things like teledentistry, which we're seeing some of now. There's Mm -hmm. consumerism. And I think larger groups have the ability to deliver products to consumers in a most efficient way with quality of care being the forefront, which is not always the case. So consolidation, number one, I think that... Perhaps it took a pandemic, but certainly during my career in dentistry, the understanding of the link between oral health care and overall health care has increased dramatically. Um, so I see the link between medicine and dentistry getting tighter and tighter. And that could take many different forms. There are already DSOs that are operating in medicine, and there are already medical groups that have dental components, but nobody's figured it out yet. But I I think that it'll be a DSO that does. Um, And I've got all kinds of different potential views of that. 
because it makes sense for the patient. I, mm-hmm. uh, um, you, know, you are fantastic at your job. You've taught me a lot about payer relationships. I view payers as our customer. They're the one who literally pay us. So it's not just about patient care. It's about the relationship with the payers. And there's mm-hmm. a lot of opportunities for further partnership there. Um, you see the payers, some of them trying to get into the provider, uh, a delivering of care. That doesn't seem to be <laughs> the answer. Um, you know, stick to your netting. Do what you're good at. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's, that's a recycled idea, by the way, Mark. It happens every few years. Is yeah. it? Okay. So yeah, yeah, I keep learning from you. Um, yeah. But that'll tighten. The relationship between uh, payers and providers w- will tighten. And I agree. Yeah. At the core of it is that the consolidation is driven by very smart business people. The, the men and women that created the DSO industry were trailblazers and have uh, built a tremendous engine that now groups like the ADSO, the Association of Dental Support Organizations, are helping the dental community uh, um, drive into a, a better future. Yeah, the I mean, you hit on something. We uh, recently did a, an interview with you know, Dr. Mark Cooper out of uh, Mark Portland, Oregon, and he's putting together a committee. And I have the deepest and profound respect for for Mark Cooper. As you should, as he and he always has this habit of asking me questions when I don't have the answers, which is not my favorite thing, but it makes me think, and I like that. Um, and he he is the gospel that he's preaching is medical dental integration, and um, is doing a lot and put together a conference, and so um, you know, kind of preview to an, another show. Um, you know, if we would have had that up, I would have gotten your take on it and maybe we'll bring you back and we'll do some sort of panel. Um, because in my career, um, talking about medical and dental, I can give you the, I can do a presentation right now on you know stuff we used to do 10 years ago. Uh, and, but I do think it is more serious. Now there's more data. Now the technology is better now. And the, the various stakeholders on all sides of the ball um, do seem to be genuinely more motivated than usual. And that should be a good thing. Should be a good thing. Um, I don't know why. It's good for the patients. Um, It's good. It's good for the patients, you know, assuming that, you know, everything comes together, um, you know, in the right way. There's, you know, as I was telling Mark, I was, you know, I'm, and I'm very direct. I mean, you know me by now. So I always kind of say what I think. And, you know, I'm always like, well, the jury's still out. I've just, I've heard it so much that, you know, and then I have my own um, reservations about, well, how are you going to, what we don't want to have happen is we don't in the dental space, the dental segment and the dental business segment is tied up into a certain bucket. Right. And so what, what we don't want to have is, is dental get tied into the Medicare reimbursement rates, which then artificially lowers the overall compensation to the provider community. And this is just my opinion. Um, and if anybody doesn't agree, you're, you're welcome to come on the show and tell me I'm wrong. Um, and we'll put on the music and have a little dance. Um, but that's how I, I see it. Um, but my, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been wrong before. And so I'd just like to, I'm all ears about it because I think if you are able to bring it all together, um, it, it just makes sense. And, you know, and we were talking the other day about the, the, the vaccinations and how the vaccinations were going, um, in the different States, you know, between South Carolina, which is rolling it out, like, like, butter um in georgia we're having problems um you know or not problems but it doesn't seem to be as more efficient um and if you know dentistry was more integrated with medicine and if dentistry was able to actually reduce the cost of chronic care which is the biggest healthcare cost drivers in this country um now we're talking big money you know and so and that's good let's build on that Uh, um patient some of the views some of the visions can be, I personally haven't figured out how to do this, but sleep apnea is a critical cause of lots of different medical problems and exacerbates and causes death all the time. There is a dental solution to sleep apnea. There are groups that are working on that. 
a partnership with uh, primary care doctors and ear, nose, and throat surgeons across the board to provide a continuum of care uh, um, could be a tremendous benefit on reducing costs on, on chronic care. And dentistry is right smack in the middle of that. Again, mm-hmm. I don't know quite how to do it yet, but that's the kind of thing that I see happening. And there's a lot of openness um, and uh, within the community. I've seen a lot of it change just in the last year because it had to. Um, there were lots of medical doctors that understood that shutting down dental offices was a massive mistake that by not having dentists available to treat patients, it was going to do nothing but cause more patients to end up in an emergency room, which is Mm. what happened. And then DSOs solved the problem as best we could by being available for emergency care in as many locations as possible to specifically avoid uh, patients ending up in an emergency room. Mm -hmm. There was a tremendous partnership, dental boards, the American Dental Association, the Association of Dental Support Organizations. We were all up in arms that the dentistry wasn't recognized as that critical component. Uh, Now it is. The industry worked together. Uh, um, all segments, you know, organized dentistry, the smaller doctors, DSOs, so that we are now dentistry is rightfully recognized as part of the critical infrastructure uh, in, in the healthcare sphere. Sorry, I got on my high horse there. Can you tell I'm a little passionate about this? No, that was good. I liked it. Very. I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. And you know, I mean, the one thing I know, it's not something that I can do about it, but, you know, when people get a toothache, they can't go see the dentist. Where are they going to go? The emergency room. What's the emergency room going to do? Nothing. You know what the most expensive thing you can do in healthcare? Go to the emergency room. So, you know, for those that are not in the insurance industry, um, that's what it is. Don't go to the emergency room unless you actually have an emergency. Um, and right now, like this is still going on, right? Like that's why sh- schools are shut down here. Um, is that hospitals are capacity. I was reading the other day that like in LA, if you get a stroke or a heart attack, <clears throat> good luck. <laughs> yeah, you don't need dental patients uh, um, in that and getting mixed up and messing, adding volume. Right, right. Let right. the doctors, let the dentists care for what they can. In fact, it's a tremendous argument for increasing the scope of care as many dental boards have done in terms of being able to uh, uh, administer the, the test, uh, COVID testing, mm-hmm. even uh, boards that are talking about the delivery of vaccines. Um, it's the con- confluence of medical and dental. I- All right. Why do, why duplicate effort, right? You know, it's like if you're going to be in a physician's office and there's something easy, you know, well, you know, relatively easier to do. Like I can't administer a vaccine, but I'm sure, uh, I, you know, my dentist could. I'm, I'm assuming. Right. Uh, not at this time, and and not certainly in some states, yes. Um, it's not in Georgia or South Carolina at this time, but I do know members of dental boards in both states that are passionate about that idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, and How it, do the dentists feel about it? Do they want to do this? There's a lot of concern about risk associated with it. Um, but again, that's an area where DSOs can really lead by helping manage that risk. Um, mm-hmm. Doctors are doctors. They're passionate about their patients. They recognize that there is a way to improve the patient care by making that part of their services. We don't quite know how to do it yet. Um, I do think it, I'm prejudiced about this, but perhaps the rollouts would be smoother if, in fact, doctor, dentists, dentists were uh, in, involved. And to jump backwards to the medical dental link around COVID and the vaccine and testing, uh, it was personal relationships, but the link between one of our doctor partners in South Carolina, Dr. Hamp Kenamore, and his colleagues in the medical system um, in Greens and uh, Greensville, Greenville, <laughs> um, Spartanburg area, resulted in uh, vaccination of our team very rapidly because of that connection between medical and dental. Hmm. Hmm. Yep. So, 
And so what you're saying is that running it through the health departments of all the different counties of Georgia, probably not the best idea considering that Georgia has the most counties than any other state in the union, except for Texas. That's three times the size geography. Um, I'm not a politician and I'm certainly not a policy setter and I don't want to be involved. It just seems a little silly to me. And we do have that many counties. Do you know why we have that many counties? Uh, no. I don't. no? Um, John Ray, our producer, he might know. He's a Georgia guy. He's the mayor of North Fulton. And so he could probably tell you he's the unofficial mayor. All right. Well, all due respect to the one who has a, the title and has to make decisions and stuff. He just works behind the scenes. But John Ray thinks it's real important that you're able to get to the North Fulton courthouse and back in one day by mule. John Ray. That's, that's the answer. <laughs> that answer okay, that's true. just funny. That no, no, I'm not making funny. that up. Uh, but that, that's the laws on the books. So, um, and that's why we have a bunch of different, you know, counties and the counties do things different ways. And now you have to explain it to a bunch of different people. Um, it's, hey, I live in a city where you're required to own a gun, so laws <laughs> there can be so much. Right. Don't don't mess with Kennesaw. <laughs> Very low crime rate. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, for for pretty good reason. It's uh, I'm, I'm going to stop my local jokes here since it's a national show. Um, but so. You're in the Southeast, right? And um, now I know you're, you're looking at some other stuff around the South. Um, when you're talking to different practice owners, what are you looking for as a partner, right? Uh, partner for a practice partner. Um, and then what are they looking for? You know, so where's, where's the synergies between the two? Like how, what's the alignment of values? I think it's the relationships. I think that practice owners have a lot of options and different DSOs are appealing to different types of practice owners. Southern Dental Alliance would like long-term partnerships. So if a doctor's nearing their, the end of their career, we're probably not the right fit for them because we would like to partner with doctors that want to just keep driving their business for the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. usually with a sound growth strategy that could benefit from uh, uh, our capital and management expertise. We love strong brands. So a deep tie to the community that's, that's real. Um, a practice that has been in the community for 40 years. That's the kind of practice that we love. Of course, there's a disconnect because that doctor might be tw towards the end of his career, but inevitably there's a second in command. Um, so we're looking for the partner and you've got to believe they have to believe in the power of DSOs because they must become owners in Southern Dental Alliance and not in a small way. Uh, we don't do the typical um, X amount in cash and, you know, this much later in a seller's note you get a chunk of your proceeds in equity in our company. Now that means you understand that that's a really good investment. Um, and your doctors like owning things. That's a lot of the reason why they have their own practices Sure, I like, I like for our company yeah. as well. Now the sellers themselves also almost always have some artificial constraint that can be solved by Southern Dental Alliance. Sometimes it's a dysfunctional computer system. Sometimes it's they have right at the level where they need another doctor. But boy, is that an expensive proposition for an individual or a small group. Those are things that you know, Southern Dental Alliance can solve. Um, some of the times it's that they are desperate to be, be able to provide a broader scope of care. Oral surgery and orthodontics are the top of that list. Southern Dental Alliance can help them do that. Um, and yes, we provide an avenue to retirement for some doctors. Um, and that's a part of the value of DSOs. It goes through the cycle of being our partner through their departure, which takes somewhere around five years. Um, and we're selective, just like the sellers are selective probably about one in five of the conversations that we have result in a partnership. That's interesting. 
I like that. So the, you know, obviously I talked to lots of folks and, you know, I, I think that you deserve a lot of credit for, for that, for the, the long term. And now, you know, they're buying into, they're buying into the enterprise. They're also buying into each other and in a way, right. So it's also about the other, oh, yeah. the other partners that are there. Now you have a, a mastermind alliance, if you will, um, on many different levels, you know, clinical business, et cetera. And not just great doctors. They're all, of course, great doctors, or they wouldn't be as successful as they are. But these are great entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Get If I get my partners in a room uh, um, and have them talking to each other, amazing things happen. I don't even need to be in the room. Um, I'll step away and find out that there was one of my partners in Noonan, Georgia, with one of my partners from that has offices in Peachtree City and the doctor that worked for one is more passionate about the kind of dentistry that the other doctor does. So all of a sudden they're sharing an associate. It helps that younger doctor grow and develop as well as help both of those practices. And next thing you know, we've got this younger doctor who's ready to be deployed into his own office. And, and we do that. We, we have uh, doctors that, have run their offices for us for eight years and more. And they treat it exactly like their office. Um, and we empower them to do that. So a nice little growth path for younger doctors. But the point being, my partners are brilliant people that are, are vested interest in growing our company and they're good at. It. Mm-hmm. And you're looking for other folks that that sounds attractive to, right? Very much so. And it's wonderful to uh, get with a potential partner acquisition target. And just uh, what we say is you're going to want some references. Go to our website, pick a doctor, any doctor, and I'll give you his phone number and call him and ask him about us. I don't have to give you the curated list of the six people that like me. Um, They all do because this is a good place. We let doctors be doctors. Gotcha. Well, I'll vouch for you, Mark Lackis. Well, that's kind of you, Patrick. I yeah, think. Or not. Absolutely. You have my seal of approval. So let's say that you have some uh, potential um, partners on listening to the show right now. And they go, you know what? That sounds good. I want to talk to that Mark Glackis character. How do they get a hold of you? I think the best way is probably to email me. My email address is mlackis, that's L-A-K-I-S, at southerndentalalliance.com. So mlackis at southerndentalalliance.com. And I'd love to hear from anybody, um, even to share ideas, build a future relationship. Uh, We partner for the long term. So if somebody's listening that's just interested in, gee, what's it look like to be a part of a DSO? I'd love to have that conversation. If we become partners now or two years from now, it's fine. Gotcha. You like to educate whether they're a fitter or not? Very much so. And, and I, it's not at all uncommon for me to have a conversation and then say, I think you should probably talk to this person. Mm-hmm. And, um, because again, it's you know, uh, the relationships are the key. Uh, and we want to be perceived as, uh, as generally good members of the dental community. And conveniently, we are. All right. Amen. I do the same thing. So I, I say no frequently. Um, and I'm like, or not right now, or, you know, whatever it's, uh, it's kind of part of being in the, in the good guy business. And I know that sounds a little hokey, but, uh, I have to get out of bed. You are definitely, you are in the good guy business. Thank you. Yeah. For years. I I have to, (laughs) sometimes I'm the information I'm giving you. You don't like it. I've had people, they're like, what do you mean, Pat? You don't want to take my money. I'm like, oh, it's not that I don't want to work with you. It's just that, um, I don't think it would be a, a, you know, it's going to generate the return on investment that's going to make you happy and thrilled with me. Um, and if that's not what the end result is going to be, then why are we going to embark on this adventure together? You know, if it's not going to lead us to the, the promised land, if you will. Um, well, Mark, I really want to thank you very much for your time. I know you're a busy man and I appreciate you coming on the show. And So do you have any other questions, concerns, feedback, good jokes for our audience out there? I'll see if I had known about the good jokes, I would have prepared one. Um, You know, (laughs) 
I, I don't have any other uh, comments, uh, but I would like to thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you on your show and um, be a part. And I'm blessed to be a part of the dental community. Right. Well, um, Mark Lacus, we appreciate you. And we also appreciate our sponsor, Practice Quotient, PPO Negotiations and Analysis. Um, yeah, ever heard of those guys, Mark? I have heard of those guys. I've worked with them for some time and they've done a very good job for us. They're terrific, right? They are in fact terrific. Yes. Great. I don't want to put words in your mouth or anything, but like outstanding, stellar, absolutely dynamite, unmatched, no peers. Those are my words, I guess, but he's not his head. You just can't see him audience. That's all. Um, So thank you to our sponsor, Practice Quotient. Um, PPO analysis and negotiation. If you ever want to reach me, um, you can find me at PO Rock at practice quotient.com. Contact our offices at 470-592-1680. If you have positive feedback, please share it with me. If you have ideas or stuff you want to hear about the show, let me know. Um, if you have negative feedback, call John Ray. He loves that stuff. If you don't like the show, it's John Ray's fault. Find him in North Fulton and you tell him whatever you want to tell him. Okay. Um, so with that, Um, I'm going to say until next time.